Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video we'll be solving SD Jones. So um, before we solve the challenge, don't forget to try the challenge on your own as always. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and don't forget to hit the sub button. Yes, so, yes, so let's not waste too much time and see what SD Jones is going to be having for us. So overview, the firmament has been updated to resolve a vulnerability. Okay, it's it's going to be resolving a vulnerability, I suppose. If you, ha if you, if you have watched the previous video, um, the challenge, I suppose, social. We saw that there was a huge vulnerability inside of that challenge. <laughs> it was simply um, setting a flag to one, and we just exploited the vulnerability on the memory copy function. Yes, yeah, so it was simply a vulnerability in the logic that the programmers have done right there. But anyway, so what do we have? So we have the same thing, but they have resolved the vulnerability. So it is the same input as gold lake and as halifax and as social challenges so we are basically going to be having i suppose um this payload to debug so okay so the first thing that i will be doing is um okay the first thing that i will be doing is i will be starting the program just to see what this program is doing using this input for example that he gave us next um i will be so so the same loop as the challenge of Churchill. So we have the same loop. So I think it will be useless to so signature valid executing payload. So it will be useless to keep on keep on continuing the dynamic analysis. So let's try to know exactly or understand what this code is doing. So if we go, we search for the main. So the same steps we always do. So the same thing. So he will be allocating, um, allocating space on the stack, and then the same two messages. Okay, we, we don't care pretty much what is happening for the messages. We can just ignore them, and then we will be memory setting. So initializing. So initializing the space. Um, the space from 0x2460 I suppose and then we will be reading uh, we will be reading the input so we will be reading the input so the input is we are going to be reading 3ff or we will be just reading the payload the payload is better yes so um the same logic as the previous challenge social and the cold lake and holly effects so basically we are going to be just parsing the address that we will be loading into and i suppose the size but this time there's no flag so the 2460 so if we get the uh if we get the bill letters just in front of us so that we can understand exactly how the parsing is happening so this is the payload so 2460 is basically pointing to this point so this is um so this is exactly how the payload is going to be parsed so 2460 is going to be pointing to this 80 so restore 11 is going to be pointing to 80 uh 2461 is going to be pointing to this zero bytes so this double zero and 2463 um is going to be pointing to this six so he'll be ignoring this one i i don't think he will be using this um this by this time okay so the same um the same process is happening he will be checking if the loading address is in the range of the 0x 8000 and 0x f thousand then he will be checking if the loading address is aligned then he will be checking the payload length if it is um inferior or equal to six so if it is inferior or equal to six then he won't be executing then he will be um then this is the interesting part so he will be memory copying so 0x40 is which is basically the size of the digital signature that we will be passing on so this is basically the size of the digital signature so let's say that's the size of the signature this is the size of the payload and this is 2460 is basically offset to the signature inside of the payload and then this is the top 
of the stack. So that means that this is the destination and this is the source. So he will be basically copying, um, so copy signature to stack or to top of the stack. Yes. Um, then once he do that, he basically going to be passing um, the offset um, of the digital signature. So he will be passing the signature. So since the stack pointer now is pointing to the first character of the signature, um, then he will be passing down the size of the payload. Um, 2460 is actually containing the payload itself. And then we have um, the 2440 should be the public key that we will be using. Yes. So if you don't exactly understand how this process is happening, you can go back and watch the video of Cold Lake. So the video of Cold Lake is basically, I think, bootloader signature verification. This is the name of the video. Um, and you can also check the video of Churchill too. We have used them together. Um, I don't, yes, so we basically use this to, uh, we basically use the verification of ED um 25519 exactly in these two challenges which are cold lake and Churchill. yes and in gold in the cold lake video which is the bootloader signature verification i have explained the process how it happens exactly from a crypto perspective yes so and then after doing that we check if the result is one then that means that the payload that we have give to the program is signed by s um, so if it is signed by as then we signature is going to be valid and he will be executing the payload So he will be just so this is the size of the payload size of the payload um, This is the um, offset to the um, To the code that we will be executing This is an offset to the code that we will be executing and R11 is, is the loading address. So this is the destination. This is the source. So he will be copying the code to the loading <coughs> to the loading address. Um, then we basically just jump or just execute the code. Yes, so this is what is going to be happening. So after reverse engineering this code, how can we exploit it? So this is the question. So the entry point that we can have, after just looking at the code, I can't see something that we can use exactly. Um, I can't find or figure out exactly a way that we can, um, that we can, for example, um, just, try to overflow for example an address or try to override an address we can we don't have any stack overflow um, any stack overflow vulnerabilities in the code since the memory copy is basically copying exactly 0x40 which is the same size as the buffer that was allocated in the um, in the beginning of the um, of the stack frame which is the same one which is 0x40 so we don't have a chance to override the return address so the only thing that came into my mind is to try to search for a private key for example uh, for example inside of the code so after taking a look for example if we continue and we wait a little we see that the public key is at the 2440 so this is the public key now above the above the public key there were some bytes that were actually also loaded with the public key so I thought why don't I just try to try them out for example one of them can be the private key I just set that assumption and it was just a guess um, yeah so so to verify that we can just use an online tool to do that for example the verification that we have is 80 um, 25519 so if we do like um, check a tool online we have this impressive tool which is a really interesting one so I'm gonna be using hex as the message and the key encoding is going to be hex so the first thing that I will be using is I'm gonna be checking the signature that we have um, 
that we have in here. So I'm gonna be checking this signature. So so this is the signature that I'm going to be checking. So this is the signature that I'm going to be checking. And the public key I'm gonna be getting from this one. So if I'm going to be parsing all that. So let's take that out. Let's try to parse that out. So what do we have? So we don't need this one. So we don't need that. We don't need that. And this is supposed to be the public key, I guess. So if we try to just get them together. So it is parsing the public key. So this is the public key. You can just load that directly. Um, as we can see, the 16 or the 32 bytes that we have in here, which are these ones, are the same as the public key. So we can just delete them for now. And we can just try to check if this is the private key or not. So this might be, for example, the private key. Um, so we can check that out and see if this is the private key. Um, so if you go back a little, yes, yeah, so after doing that, now the message that we will be using is basically this one. So this is the payload that we have signed. So this is the code that we will, we will be executing using that signature, which is this one. So if you go now and verify, we see that this is a valid signature. Now, if we try to, for example, try to change this F with a C and we verify, well, it is the same thing. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, for example, let's try D. It is the same. Hmm. That's super weird, by the way. The maybe ah yes it is okay because basically the verification is only needing the public key yes yes it is because we, it is because only using the public key so let's say for example i'm gonna be um trying to change trying to change for example um trying to change the code and see if the resulted um, if the resulted signature is going to be verified or not so let's for say for example I'm gonna be adding 32 I'm gonna sign a new signature verification so this is was si this was signed using the private key so if I'm gonna be verifying that it's going to be working let's say for example I'm gonna be changing now the F with a C and I'm gonna be signing that again so it's an invalid signature so if I'm gonna be verifying that it's going it's not going to be working so so that means that this private key is associated to this public key so we have successfully leaked the private key now we can sign whatever code that we want we can basically execute whatever code that we want so what is the best code that we can use we can just choose the code that we have used with the um, with the Bangalore challenge, with the Lagos challenge, and with the Churchill challenge, we can just use that one, which is basically the payload that is going to be unlocking the door for us directly, which we have used a lot, which is 0x FF00. Um, and if you want to know how this payload, how did we came with this payload, you can just check the video. Um, you can check exactly the Bangalore video. We have explained how we get this two lines. So I basically just step into the interrupt function and check them um, and retrieve them from there. Yes. So if we assemble that, we get this one that we can conclude is that you should never hard code your private keys inside of the source code or you will be just doomed like that. Yes, I hope you learned something out of that video. And the thing that you should learn is that you ne you should never hard code a private key inside of your source code. Never, you should never do that. Private key should be, um, should private keys should also or should be always secure in a place that sh that no one should take a look at. Because if the private key is leaked, then everyone should or can sign the code, do whatever they want. Because the public keys should be. To the public and the private key should be the private i think <laughs> yes so see you on the next video bye